This episode of the Game Over Greggy Show is brought to you by Kinda Funny, the animated series. It's our new thing, and we're trying to do 12 episodes, one a month, and we need your support. Please head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunny and toss us a few bucks to make it a reality. All the money raised in January goes towards this. So if you've never supported us on Patreon, come over, give us $1, and when they take the money at the end of the month, go away. Just leave us alone. Don't worry. You keep watching it for free. Have a good life. Thanks for nothing. Except the dollar in January that hopefully made the whole... You know what I mean. Tim. Yes. Take me home. Okay. Tonight. Um, we talk about food a lot on the show. Usually yeah, fast food. Yeah. Or mm. cold cuts. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to talk about the kind of middle ground. We've spoken about BJ's before. I wanted to open up the table. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Explain a bit more than that. You know, we talk about them a lot. That's good. Sometimes the service isn't the best, but... <laughs> They're you know. sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's whatever. all over the place. Um, I want to talk a about... restaurant. BJ's about restaurant. About the, like, like, the chain restaurant. Oh, okay. Mm. And our, our feelings on the Chili's oh, and the, the BJ's and the Elephant Bars mm. and the Elephant Room Bar? Elephant Bar. Elephant Bar. Right. Elephant Bar. I hear you. Applebee's. Yeah. TGI TGI's. <laughs> Um, Lone Star Steakhouse, Red Outback Lobster Steakhouse. Oh, Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, yeah, Texas yeah. Roadhouse. Real quick, while we do this and marinate right now on the idea, I'd love to thank all the patrons. Oh my god, who supported us in December. And Kevin rolls his eyes and makes it so hard. By the way, you have to make this graphic. Yeah, no, I, I assume Kevin will ask me at nine o'clock <laughs> oh, tonight. Sorry, Colin, he needs to watch his hockey game. Too. You watching the hockey game? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about it, and I'll, I'll be bold and tell you this. I remember when they were awesome. I remember growing up in the suburbs of Chicago. I remember when I lived in Columbia. Chili's was a big deal we'd go to. Get that unlimited chips and salsa. Mm. Fucking dynamite. Mm. Get the chicken sandwich there. I enjoyed it. I remember when I first moved here, we went to BJ's all the time, too. Got that, like, uh, you know, the bazookis. Bazooki. The buffalo chicken <clears throat> pizza pie. Hold the barbecue sauce. Add extra buffalo sauce. Yeah. No celery, no onions, please. They always fuck it up. Always. Nine times out of ten, they fuck mm-hmm. it up. And so, loved it all. Removed from it by... Eight, nine years or whatever, because everything is my mom. My favorite's when my mom comes to visit or when I'm visiting my mom and we talk about food in San Francisco. And she always goes, oh, Gregory knows all these great hole in the wall restaurants in San Francisco. And, and it took me a while to be like, oh, right, because everything's a hole in the wall here because there are no fucking chains here. Chains right. don't exist, mm-hmm. right? Like right. Pachi's is like the closest thing to a chain because there's a million of them because they've been a successful local business or whatever. Being removed from chain restaurants, goddamn, do they suck. I can't, you go back now Chain and it's like, us? yeah, oh my God, you try to go, I, when I, when we went to BJ's after, I, I hadn't been to BJ's in years and it was like, let's go to BJ's. Like, yeah, I'll get them. The pizza came and I was like, oh, like is, is service fucking awful. Why do you have all these tables if you can't take care of them? Mm-hmm. You know, nobody cares. They're all a bunch of shit kids there and everything else, except for our guy who was a shit old man who just did not like the <laughs> restaurant at all. And then, yeah, the pizza was fine, but it wasn't great. You know what I mean? And we had we had a better BJ's experience when we went down to play Metal Gear that one time. We had a good time. one, actually. But it's still the same thing of just like... Oh, I mean, we sat there for 10 like, minutes and everyone's like... And then we had the, the obligatory, oh, has anyone helped you? Yeah, yeah, No, no one has. Can yeah. we... Oh, I'll get someone. And then no one was there for another 10 minutes, you know? Yeah, um, yeah there was a time and a place where... You know, when you're in Orange County or you're in the suburbs of Southern California, like everything... You, everywhere you go is a chain restaurant. Right. So I went to Friday's like a thousand times because it was open late and I like the wings. But being removed from that, like trying to be a slightly healthier eater um, and then existing in San Francisco, you do get spoiled because you do realize that like there is really good food in the city. Not a lot of it, but there is really good food. Like the Tipsy Pig we mentioned earlier was Very good. really, really good. Right. But and you contrast that to TGI Fridays and you're like, it's no comparison. Dude. Right. Um, but I, I have had better service probably overall in my life. I've probably had better service at chain restaurants than I have anywhere in San Francisco. But is that I, just the quantity you think stacked up? Probably, but also it's because when there's pros and cons to having a chain restaurant, right? You have a corporate structure, and the corporate structure dictates the steps of service and how those companies are supposed to sure. exist, right? So TGR Friday is like I had friends that worked at TGR Friday. Some of my brother's friends worked there, and they they are the ones that would always talk about that. Like there is a concept at Fridays that when a table drops, you are supposed to be there to say hi within the first like thirty seconds of them sitting down yeah. and take a drink order, sure. right? And you're supposed to check back every few minutes and you're touch tables, to, touch tops, yeah, always, right? Yeah. And you're supposed to treat every table like it's one big table, so that you're when you go to one table, you go to the next table, next table, next table, and you do and you don't kill yourself with different trips going back and forth, yeah. which doesn't always work out, but at least it's a nice plan of attack. Sure, right? I get that, but I, but it, it comes back to I think like. 
when you're at a, a hole in the wall local restaurant or whatever, right? Usually the table sizes are smaller. You know, what I mean, there's fewer tables. I yeah. feel like most of the time compared to a Chili's. So I was in well, I, I was in Santa Cruz over the over the break over New Year's, um, and granted, it was one of the only restaurants open that day because it was New Year's Day. But we went to this this little diner that was like independently owned, and I'm looking around and I'm like. This person is serving us, but it also has tables in the patio and is also like over mm-hmm. there. And, every, and I'm like, there's no idea of sections here. Now, maybe sure. someone got drunk the night before or didn't show up for work and right. threw everything off. But I'm like, this is an, a, a, an instance where I'm like, this is not being run properly. And right. the waiters and waitresses are not properly being motivated because to them, it's it's – you know, it, this is just something they're not really taking seriously as this isn't their career. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. right, right. right. Um, I'm with you. I understand that. That's where there is. I think the fact that like I'm be- painting with a really broad brush and I'm like, sure. it's chain restaurant sucks. There's clearly probably great ones or whatever. And then it's the same thing where like not every local just because mm-hmm. it's small doesn't mean it's going to be great. Sure. kind of thing. You know what I mean? But I mean, yeah, you think back to all these places. I mean, I remember Chili's and I'm talking about the unlimited chips and salsa and how great it was. And then like going home and just being like. Like there's no water in your mouth because all it was was salt. salt. You know what I mean? It salt all came out of a bag and put into a thing. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? the same thing with the BJ's pizza or whatever. Yeah. It was just like all glistening and gross because it's just been buttered and you know yeah. all it is butter all over. Well, also, your tastes change, right? And that's something that you don't really think of ever. As you get older, your actual tastes do change. You sure. get tired of the Y'all things you like before, happening. and physiologically, you start still. to crave earlier other things. The other example, I mean, is like Olive Garden. I remember like when oh man, I used to love. Olive I got Garden. in a fight with my girlfriend oh. in college. Fuck it, I'll pay for the Olive Garden. You know what I mean? Let's go out and be like have like a romantic nice dinner, right? Because it's pasta. When you're there, your and maybe someone yeah. when you're there, your family, right? And hadn't been to a pot, a pot, an Olive Garden. In God knows when. This is also like I remember, like with my mom, like it'd be a thing, like oh, you know, like in growing up or whatever, we go to the Olive Garden for like a nice, mm-hmm. a nice yeah. Sunday dinner or whatever. Um, went to the Olive Garden when I went back to Chicago a few years ago, and it was one of those where I had kind of shoved it down all my friends' throats so much about the Portillos that I couldn't make a play to go to a Portillos. And like it was like one of our last yeah. meals. It was Christine and me, me and Christine, and then another couple or two, I forget. And they were like, oh, and they were like, Olive Garden. And I was like, I have no cards to play in this. And I haven't been to an Olive Garden in so I, I'm probably just, you know, in my head, blah, blah, blah. Got like a fetish. It was awful. It was so bad. I was just like, I can't, I can't believe people. And like, they were all like, oh, this is so great. I'm like, don't you guys, aren't you, do, is this what you do? Like, you know what I mean? I they the all, they, they all, exactly, the exactly. Yeah. And they're all happy. And I'm like, oh, that's great. But it's just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Same thing. I remember <laughs> when a game scoop. When we hit episode 100, so now I'm going back years and years and years and years and years. But when we hit episode 100, we went out as an IGN with like Dunham and Dan Adams and me and Damon. We went to Red Lobster, and everybody got Red Lobster stuff. And we were all so excited, and the biscuits are so good. And then that came, and I was like, "This is fucking terrible. Yeah. This is awful. Why are we doing this?" I'm not a fan of Red Lobster. Uh, I love these places though. I completely love almost everything about them. Not saying the food is spectacular, but I think that part of the experience for me is just being there and there's there's so much that goes into it and it wasn't until recently that when Gia was telling me that like I think about restaurants in ways that she could never comprehend and it's the same with me like me and Kevin are the same as this where it's like the food is just one one of many aspects it's all right what type of sodas do they serve is it refillable sodas how quickly are we going to be seated are the people going to leave us alone but also be there when we need them to um what is that free appetizer that they bring. Olive Garden. Does Olive Garden suck? Yes, it does. Does it give you a shit ton of free breadsticks that are awesome? Yes, it does. Outback, their brown bread, what is that made from? Just happiness? Yeah, it's amazing. And it's like there's all these like little factors that add on top of each other. Or um, Red Robin. The, the bottomless fries. You got to factor mm-hmm. all this mm-hmm. in to your meal plan. I hear you. And then, of course, you had the appetizers, and it's like depending on the size of your group. Like, when I'm going to these places, I have a battle plan of what that night's going to look like. The quality of the food is nine times out of ten not what I'm thinking about. I'm envisioning the experience and the meal that I'm about to have. Sure. And is it good enough is the question. Now, do I get bad food all the time? Yeah, I do. You know? But a lot of the time, I'm fine with that. I think and it's just I you... like the fact that I get to sit, and I like the fact that when you go to these places, you're you're going to be able to sit down pretty quickly. Sometimes there's weights depending if you're in the mall. You get, or the, little, you get the little buzzer. Yeah, but most of the time, you get there, you're guaranteed a table, right? Quickly, and then you can just sit there and talk. And that's what I like doing with Kevin. We'll sit and we'll talk, and then they'll, hey, do you want do you want to refill on your coffee? Do you want to refill on your coffee? Yep. Do you want whatever? Yeah, yeah. And it's like. I could sit here for fucking five hours. And these little independent places, there's lines out the door. Sure. Yeah. You sure, know, sure, sure. you have to plan your trip three days in advance to make sure that you're timing it right. So that with traffic and with parking and with this and that, you don't need to worry about this. They got parking lots. Yeah. Like, I just don't Oh no, that's why they're they're in shit. the suburbs, right? Because it's just sprawl and they can be anywhere and do whatever. I'm I hear you. 
I understand what you're saying. I'm not meaning to demonize mm. these here chain restaurants. Obviously, we've grown up on them. I remember when Macaroni Grill, you know, like we were going, to, oh, we were going yeah. to, I don't even not is. prom, uh, homecoming or whatever, mm-hmm. and we went to, we went to Macaroni Grill. Macaroni Grill. See, and that's my, the other thing that fascinates me so much. There's so much I just simply don't know. Mm. The Do you, world did, is a vast. Did you guys place. have Bennigan's out here? No, no, but I know Bennigan's. Bennigan's in Columbia, Missouri. They used to do like unlimited wings Wednesday or some shit like that. Mm. Hooters has that here. Yeah, but Tuesdays. Hooters wings suck. They, Hooters they wings fucking suck. Uh, Hooters is bad. They news told, bears, I, yeah, see, I don't fuck with great pickle chips though. Did they? Oh no, we no, had some at Comic Con. It's like, like there's nothing food wise I like at Hooters, and they have Pepsi. There's a yeah. few. There's a, there's a few chain restaurants that hold a special place in my heart, largely because those are the ones like that. When I first started at IGN, we would hit up every freaking like night. Almost. So BJ's. Uh, BJ's is one of them. Uh, PF Chang's is another one. Yeah, I we used to go to that a lot. No, 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 no. Which what? one? The ceremony? Where is it? Uh, mm-hmm. Brennan and I used to go down to the one in Palo Alto. Jesus! Yeah. Drive all the way down there. Go to but you guys live closer. There. You we, were, yeah, in we were in San Mateo, Mateo right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what, I mean, but I think there's a certain comfort and consistency, right? So that when you go to these indie places, like the independent restaurants, you're right, Tim. There are just so many different things you're like, I don't, I didn't even know I had to deal with this, right? Like I was at one one time where they were like, just so you know, we're going to need this table in like 20 minutes. And I'm like, what does that mean? And they're like, well, you only have another 20 minutes to sit here before we have to ask you to get up and like leave. And I'm Should like, because the performer's going like, to come in and play their guitar and they need this area. or whatever. Right. Where I'm like, that's unheard of. Like, why would you? I'm like, I, I get that. Maybe if you're at a, I, I just don't understand why you would be able to treat people like that. Right. But like, I don't think you're ever going to hear that out of P.F. Chang's at a P.F. Chang's. They're gonna be like, yeah, they're going to go in the back and bitch about you. Um, and when I used to serve ta- food, I would bitch about tables that wouldn't leave either because I'm like, dude, you, if this, they've been here for three hours. You bitch about Tim coffees. and Kevin over there. Yeah. yeah, I probably would. I'd probably hate you guys because, you you know, you're sitting up there taking that table. I could have turned three or four times. But, you know, you go to you go to a place like the Tipsy Pig and it's like mm. it's a neighborhood restaurant, but it's hard to get a reservation. But the marina's like that in like, general. The marina's always over. Right. Which is people. why I don't go out to dinner in my neighborhood. Yeah. Ever. Like the, the place I went to last night was in the mission. It's and stressful. It was like, yeah. It is very stressful. It's not. It's not. I don't understand what you guys are talking about. The stress of going to nice restaurants. Okay. okay here's here's, here's, here's go to open table, make a reservation and go there at the right, time. So, the reservation so I get to the restaurant last night. Right. And they're like, what time's your reservation? And I was like, what's well, at 815? It was 810 at this point. And they're like, great. Is everyone from your party here? Yeah. And I'm like, well, now the stress sets in because two of our part, my party wasn't there. Migs and his wife hadn't hadn't come yet. They were on their way. But what if they were late? And then they give the rest. And then my wife starts looking at me like, uh oh, like it's my next birthday. And they had they just gave the table away. And and I'm looking out. and There's plenty of tables left, but they're taken maybe right because all oh, those are reserved. And like, oh, no one's been sitting there for like three hours. Well, I'll seat you, but you can only be there for twenty minutes. And it's like, ah, oh, fuck you. Yeah, I, I mean, so I'm like kind of. Uh, so, like everyone else, I grew up on chain restaurants. Like my my conception of chain of of restaurants as a kid, nice restaurants like All were through movies or something. Like I didn't, yeah, I yeah. never went to like a nice restaurant until I was an adult. Like a really, really nice restaurant. Mm-hmm. Like we used to go to my family used to go like to, to regional chains, like the Grand Round and Friendlies and stuff like that. Which I fucking love Friendlies. The Grand Round was awesome because they would serve you like ice cream and Yankees or Mets hats. You can kind of like, oh yeah, that's awesome. And. uh so like that's like what we grew up going to. I didn't really go to like w- actually on the island like we didn't really have Chili's or TGI Fridays until I was like older. Like I don't know why, but we didn't have like anything like I would see commercials for this shit, but I had no idea what it was until I lived in New England for a while, and then I, like we used to go to Chili's all the time. And I used to just I used to just buy a, get a blooming onion for dinner, and uh, that's like three thousand yeah. calories. I love it. <laughs> I'd like play hockey because I told you guys a story. Like I I used to just carbs like. I used to take the Lipton's butter noodle thing before hockey games. This is when I was like eighth, ninth, tenth grade. Like that is like for a family, and you put like a whole stick of butter in it and like milk and shit, and you like just cook it, and it like blows up into this huge like thing of noodles. And I would just eat all of that by myself before hockey games. Um, and that was probably literally Jesus. like twenty five hundred, three thousand, three thousand five hundred calories. Yeah. And I would down it with like a half a two liter of coke. And then, then you uh, go and out there and stop the puck. Yeah. Then sometimes. <laughs> Let a couple um, soft. What did you call them? Soft goals. Soft goals. Yeah. There was a few few soft goals. Few soft goals. Uh, or I was just you know riding the pine. Other times, dude, just sitting there with three thousand calories in my gut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so like the thing, the thing about it is that like Greg probably can actually relate to this more and, and maybe you can more than Tim and I can in the sense that the, when you live in the suburbs, like when you live in Inland Empire or something like that, like you don't have a metropolitan life. So like right, the, the, and I don't mean that as an, as a good thing or a bad thing. You just don't have the New York city experience. It's not to say like Sabaro, like the famous office, uh, joke about like how Michael goes to Manhattan and gets his favorite, favorite pizza, my favorite pizza and it's place. Sabaro or whatever. They're, these chains exist, but New York city is like a hotbed of great food. And like, you know where to go and you can go to any bagel shop or any pizza shop and get, you know, shitty food and get street meat or anything like that. But if you want to eat high end, you can do that too. And 
so my like my uh, exposure to that didn't happen until I really moved to San Francisco, and it really didn't happen until I wasn't making forty or fifty thousand yep. dollars a year anymore either. So you know, like when we were barely scraping by, and I was actually when we went out the other day for Sin's uh, um, engagement party, like eight or nine of us went out. Old friends of ours we used to hang out with, and you came up a lot. We were talking, showing old pictures, and talking about old times, <laughs> beta breakers, and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And um, we were talking about how like we didn't have a lot of us didn't have two nickels to rub together, but we didn't know any better. And like I, I remember running straight, running out of money. Oh yeah, like a few times. Like I had no uh, money. That happened. And, and like 22, 23 years old, and like I, I used my last twenty dollars to buy two beers and get home in a cab, like or get halfway home in a cab and then walk. You know, like go as far as like the meter, when the meter, like, like when the meter like hits uh, nine okay, eighty, I'm like, all right, stop, stop, and I, I just get out and like, and I've done, you know, I, we've done that before and. So like when I started making a little bit more money, I started realizing that my financial vice was good food and drinks. And when I got into craft cocktails, um, it really hit a crescendo where like I really won't I won't shy away from spending a few hundred dollars on dinner with someone like at a really good restaurant because I don't really spend my money doing anything else. Mm -hmm. So like that's my vice. So would I ever like choose to go to a TGI Friday's or a Chili's or a, a, a Olive Garden? Absolutely not. I'll go to Hard Water or Hops and Hominy or Nopa. And some of these places, yeah, to, to like Nopa is my favorite restaurant in the city. Nopa is like considered really maybe the greatest restaurant in, in San Francisco, period. And getting a reservation there is fucking impossible, you know, and like I, you have to you have to get a reservation there like three or four weeks ahead of time if you want to eat at any normal hour. Yeah. And I got a reservation there like a, a week ago for two weeks from now at 930 at night because like that was the only time they had. So, yeah, it is a pain in the ass. You can't walk into these restaurants. But when you go to these restaurants, you get great service. In my experience, especially at Nopa, they're fucking awesome. The cocktails, you know, you're paying 10, 11, 12, 13 dollars for them, depending on the spirits is fucking phenomenal the food is fucking phenomenal the staff's knowledgeable the place has a reputation and so like the same thing with hard water you go to hard water you know you're gonna get great cocktails and you know you're gonna get great food and so it's worth paying for it but i also don't look down upon the more suburban experience because those options don't exist they couldn't thrive hard water wouldn't even be in business if it was in columbia right right you know what i mean so it's it's yeah, i'm not trying to knock those kind of restaurants so i'm not saying you are i'm just saying like I, I so i look at the experience as a geographic thing because growing up on long island in the shadow of new york city you would still i'm sure there were i mean there are nice restaurants in, on long island i go to them now because i'm aware of them but you know when i go home like I'm, I'm i still remember going to friendlies or going to ground round or you know going to tj's and just getting heroes or mm -hmm. and i mean h-e-r oh yes or like you know those kinds of things or just going to the diner like diners don't exist anywhere outside of the tri-state area like there's just no diners you know, like, and, right. and like, there's a there's diner. Steak every, and shake. There's a diner every fucking yeah. two seconds in New York. You know, like, so like, we just ate differently there, but that was our experience. Yeah. So I can't look at California and be like, well, where the fuck are the diners? Like, well, you guys don't eat di at diners here. Like, we eat at diners. You know, there's like Lucky Penny. That's basically it. <sighs> Lucky Penny. You know. Yeah. But like, there's literally a Lucky Penny every two blocks where I'm from. And so, <laughs> and so, it's 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 just I think it's it's where you grow up and how you grow 100%. up and all that kind of stuff. But my 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 uh, interpretation of food has totally changed. I like good food and i like good drinks and i'll pay for them if and you, i get, you know if you serve me shitty cocktails or shitty food but i'm paying like i'm paying for good cocktails or good food that's that's a problem for me i'd rather pay and know what i'm gonna get for me it's always just that juxtaposition that it just seems so normal for me that we all do that and we all do let's go to the ramen shop or let's go to this place or let's go to this other you know what i mean all these different places and then you go home and the people who still are in a world where that doesn't exist are still eating the in like in the ways we th i used to eat and mm -hmm. i haven't ate in a decade you know what i mean that's where it is the, the disconnect for me I'm just like I'm like oh I'm like for me it's like oh everyone must grow up and in, into this kind of world and it's like oh no they don't and because yeah there's not that many options too there mm -hmm. are like that's always my thing when I go there and my mom or somebody's like let's go to the chain restaurant whatever I'm like or let's look at what, what about that little brew pub over there that's like all by itself like is that anything let's try that you know what I mean let's go mm -hmm. somewhere different there, there are still some things at chain restaurants that I crave. I oh, sure. No, I, for real, like I talked a lot of shit about BJ's. I, I love that BJ's that fucking BJ, Buffalo BJ, chicken. BJ, BJ. It was as fast you kidding as the 3DS's the, library. I'll, I'll give a shout out to two. <laughs> yeah. Right. One I haven't eaten at since college, but I used to eat there a lot was Cheesecake Factory. Now, she, that was, I was going to say Cheesecake, cheesecake Factory. Factory is legit. It's now no, my it's, wife it's and not, I go to that maybe once every two months. Yeah. Like we I haven't eaten there literally since 2007, but I used to go there like that was like me eating well in college. Right, like, every right, weekend right. I'd get my IGN freelance money and I'd be like, let's go fucking. Good. You know, cheesecake, cheesecake factory, factory. Bro. you know at 21 year 22 years old whatever and then the other that i'll give a shout out to even though it really is shit is buffalo wild wings yeah buffalo like wild buffalo wings. wild wings now. is the wings are great and yeah. i like the mozzarella sticks and stuff like that the, the garlic Good the spicy tips. garlic sauce is fucking <laughs> unbelievable the service it, it's the same point you're saying 16 year old kids or 18 year old kids fucking awful service i'll never forget going in there the last time the one at uh, saramonte the bathroom it was like it was post-apocalyptic you know what I mean? The bathroom. And it was like one in the afternoon. 
And I'm like, what? Did uh, anyone clean the bathroom yesterday? <laughs> um, and nope. I remember actually tweeting about it, and they like got back to me and be like, oh, reach out and let us know. And I'm like, um, it's that's like, one of the places. Like, whatever. The the Buffalo Wild Wings at Ceremony is one of the places where the um, the paper towels are always a disaster, and their sink set up in such a stupid ass way that no matter what, when it comes out, it's going to touch the sink oh, and get I hate wet. That shit. So then you have to like make the sacrificial paper towels, right, right, which right, I'm right, sure right, the right. environmentalists love. And then, so that shit happens. Then all of a sudden, there's just this like graveyard of wet paper, paper towels, towels everywhere. Mm. And then there's the people that just like you know kind of make like a slope and then just fucking let that thing go and then just rip one off. And it's just like yeah. there's just like a slide of paper towels that's now touching the floor. Mm -hmm. And it's like, good lord. Wild wings, I do enjoy. I, I like their wings. I like the potato wedges with cheddar. That's some. That's the good shit right there. And I like. The, I like their fried pickles. I know. I don't think is that. Uh, yeah, they have good fried pickles. You somebody else. When, when, last chips. time we were there, somebody didn't like them. I forget. I liked them because they're pickled okay. chips. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I hate spirits. the food at Buffalo Wild Wings Damn. just as a whole, but I love Buffalo Wild Wings still. Sure. That just goes back to my point. Yeah. I love that place. Fucking love See, it. Wild Wings. You can sit there forever. Wild Wings will always have a special place in my heart because you were talking about how there wasn't a Chili's really where you were, right? And in the olden days of being a kid, I remember when there was the Chili's, and then. On the other side of Wheaton, they opened up another Chili's. So I was like, what the fuck? And I remember when we found out about <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings in Elmhurst, and it became the farthest place we would ever drive. Yeah. And that, it, where we would go, and we would drive the 35 to 45 minutes to go to dinner, me and my dumbass friends, to, to go out there. We'd get there, and we'd be those morons that were there all night long. We, we were the morons who sat at Buffalo Wild Wings on when it was 25 Cent Wing Tuesday. Sat there all night long and then close the place down and then drive back and go play in state of play football. We were also the my friends were also the type of morons who would go to the jukebox, put in twenty dollars and play only Metallica. Yeah. And then our waitress would come by and show us another tab from another group that was like here's and then it was like tip, no tip, and the she wrote in, play, don't play all this Metallica. <laughs> You're like, well, don't give yep, me the option. There's that. Uh, we're still those guys, me and Kevin. Yeah. It's like TGIF, there's no one near SF. Unless you drive 30 minutes, 45 Going minutes, city. maybe an hour if it's rush hour, which it always is when we're going there. Yeah, we fucking go there, though. I'm going to give a what shout brings, out. What makes you go there, though? I love the the burger with the um, Jack, Daniel Jack Daniel sauce. sauce. Jack Daniels. Oh, my God. I'm going to give a shout out to their Jack Daniels wings. I'm also going to give a shout out to their, they have a tostada nacho, if I'm not mistaken. That's the bomb. They have that big platter that they can get, like the the platter of appetizers that always oh. comes out kind of cold. Yeah, but you're like, I don't give a fuck. It's impossible to get those things all it's, to come out at the same time. It's like science, man. Uh, I'm also gonna give a huge shout out to the uh, Mazithra cheese dish at Spaghetti Factory. Now, you guys talk a lot of shit about Olive Garden. I was never an Olive Garden guy. Little did you know, I was always a Spaghetti Factory guy. Spaghetti Factory is some bullshit LA shit that yeah. I only know because of Comic Con. I only know it from where it was at Comic Con. Every time, too. I, yeah, there was like a, there was a good run every year. We'd have to we inevitably be forced to go to that one because yeah. someone screwed up the lunch order and we have to like send someone down there. Fuck that place. But that Mazithra cheese like dish, it's all it is is like just spaghetti with like butter, garlic, and just a heaping shit ton of that cheese on top of it <laughs> to the point where you. So your point about chilies, you'd be eating it midway through and you'd like lose your sight because it would suck all the like. Moisture out of your fucking head. <laughs> so good. That's the thing about it. It's, I feel like all the stuff at the restaurants you get is all salt. You know what I mean? It is. It's, it's all crazy. salt, it's all butter, it's all lard. It's all, it all came it's out of a bag. It's all this other stuff. So yeah, freeze dried first. You know, fried first, then frozen, then refried again. So it's, it's all terrible for you. That is the one thing that when you when you do go to these nicer restaurants, to Colin's point, like the quality of food in a, and no doubt is better. Undoubtedly, is oh, better. Sure. Because you're using fresher ingredients, and in San Francisco, you do, it comes with an air of pretentiousness, but you are getting, like, organic vegetables, stuff that, like, they're like, we grow this shit right outside. You can see it. Well, there's the chicken that you're going to eat, and they snap its neck and bring it to your table. Yeah, and open, I, know, I, I feel like open kitchens are cool, too. Like, Hardwater has an open kitchen. Yeah. Hops and Hominy has an open kitchen. Wayfair Tavern has an open kitchen. Nopa has an open kitchen. Yeah. When you're willing to, like, show people exactly what you're doing, yeah. it's usually a pretty good sign that the food's good. But, but it's not for everyone. I mean, like, if you, like, you know, I'll pay... $25 for Wayfair chickens fried chicken injected with rosemary and thyme and all this kind of stuff because it's <coughs> fucking, Chef Tyler recommends. Chef Tyler does recommend you put some lemon on it uh, because it's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. It's worth $25 and their old fashions are worth $10 and their Sazeracs are worth $12 like but to not to everyone and so like it's a matter of like what you are willing it's it reminds me what Eric Castro says uh, and I think I've said this before about bourbon where he's like there's no such thing as bad bourbon and he's right um, but he's like, there's a big difference. Like, you know, you have your, uh, Suzuki bourbon, like your, like your shitty kind of, uh, your like, Isuzu. like, G yeah, like your, your Jim Beam or your Evan Williams, which you is like fine. That? Like it's not sipping bourbon, but it's good for cocktails or old forest or whatever. And then you get to your, like your, um, your, you know, I don't know, Ford 
Ford Ranger kind of level, like Bullet and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, and and Buffalo Trace, and then you get to like your Lexus level with like Eagle Rare and Michters and all that kind of stuff, and then you get to like your Tesla with you know Pappy and Blantons and all that kind of stuff. But he's like the difference once you get in the middle to the top is not as big as the difference from the middle to the bottom, sure. and so like. You don't want to pay too much for your food, but you don't want to pay too little for your food either. I think like right in that little sweet spot right in the middle where you're getting a, a 15 to 25 or $30 entree, I think it's perfect. I don't, I'm not paying $70 for an entree unless it's like a beautiful steak. Unless it's a like steakhouse, that. yeah. But, you know, so what I'm saying is like you, you don't want to predicate the quality of the food based on what you're paying for it. But there is something to be said about the quality of the food and what you're paying for. It. Very true. <clears throat> this has been the Game Over Greggy Show and we hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can toss us a few bucks to get every episode early along with a bunch of exclusives and this month in January support kind of funny the animated series which you should watch on kind of funny.com if you have no bucks to toss no big deal head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny where you can catch the show topic by topic day by day until we post the entire thing for free is one big video what is the game over Greggy show Nick it's the best funny you planet. should ask each and every week four sometimes five best friends gather around this table each bring a random topic of discussion for your amusement we hope you enjoyed this episode it's been fun colin's gonna do something for tell on it no i just want to just want to hold him just be careful with him support his back I'm so support his back support his back i introduced you to this dog nope not that's also not true <laughs> <laughs> until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you <laughs>